Hey, good morning. This is Pete and Dorcas Vasita with you on this Sunday, July the 23rd, 2023. So glad you could join us. And we are at Cornerstone Assembly in the Pentecostal. We meet at a church called The River at 415 Academy Street, 7 p.m. on Sundays and 7 p.m. on Thursdays. And uh, this Thursday, we continue our study in fasting. And we start a new section, uh, Why We Should Fast. It's going to be a number of podcasts on that some beautiful reasons why we should fast so please uh listen to those podcasts you'll find them at let's see if i do this by memory sapphirestreams.com forward slash fasting dot html i'm sorry no that's not it it's sapphirestreams.com forward slash life forward slash fasting dot html in fact i could probably bring that up on the screen for you now but i won't do that it's up there but uh, we won't do that. So, but we're so glad you could join us. And today, uh, we want to go to the book of Leviticus. Now, some people say, ah, the Old Testament. I don't want the Old Testament at all. And uh, it's all boring, stuff like that. But the New Testament is built upon the Old Testament. If there was no Old Testament, there'd be no New Testament. There'd be no Jesus, really, when you come right down to it. And the Old Testament talks about Jesus. In fact, the passage that we're looking at now, today, in the Old Testament, Leviticus 4, uh, is going to be pointing to Jesus. In fact, uh, you could say every sacrifice that's listed in Leviticus uh, is points to Jesus Christ. Now, there's also an overlap, you might say. It could also point to how a Christian should be. So towards the end of this message, whatever Jesus has done, basically we're going to apply that to our lives if we are saved. And so uh, there's many things in God's Word about Christ. And when it comes to sacrifices, wow. You know, hey, uh, it speaks a lot about him. But the point that we want to bring out at one level is that Christ has fulfilled the Jewish law. Thank God we don't have to offer bulls and goats anymore and lambs. Uh, sometimes I read Leviticus and think, man, I have to have a lot of bulls and goats around, you know. And uh, But we're going to get a Leviticus in a shortly here. And... Uh, in fact, let's bring it up on the screen for you now because we want to talk about 3, verse 3 of our passage. So let's uh, look at that now for you and bring it up on the screen. If it obeys me, there you go. All right, here we go. All right, in verse 3, and that's the one I'm going to start with. Uh, on the screen you have the American King James tweaked by myself. What I've done in this case was replace the Lord, the, the phrase the Lord with Yavah. Whenever you see the Lord and Lord with all capital letters, that is the divine name. And so I want to bring that out because, uh, you know, the divine name, that is extremely important. It means the existing one. Amen. He exists. He is the existing one. Uh, let me, uh, this came to my mind right now to say this real quick. If you have a copy of, and what was it now? Haley's Bible Handbook. Don't use it. <laughs> okay. Because as a, as a question there, where did God come from? We don't know. He says, what? What do you mean you don't know? The divine name tells you that he always existed. He didn't have to come from anywhere. He always was. Okay. And years back, I had recommended Haley's, uh, Bible Handbook, and I think Rudin's maybe, and of course Unger's uh, for people to study. But throw out Haley's, okay? Because if they, if they think along that line, mm, I don't know. I don't think I want that stuff. Now, uh, verse 3, Leviticus, Leviticus 4, speaks about the uh, if the anointed priest sins. Christ, of course, never sinned. But the thing is, he took our sin and our spirit took our place also upon the cross so we can be redeemed and live for him. So, yeah, this applies to Christ in the sense that he took our sin. So, I will begin with verse 3. I'll read it from the American King James and tweaked by me, and then Sister Dorcas reads it from the New King James. If the priest that is anointed to do... Uh -huh. All right. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish to Yavah, for a sin offering. He shall bring the bull to the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord, lay his hand on the bull's head, kill the bull before the Lord. 
and shall lay his hand on the bullock's head and kill I'm sorry and the priest that is anointed shall take the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation priest shall dip his fingers in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before the Lord front of the veil of the sanctuary and the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of sweet incense before Yahweh, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation he shall take from it all the fat of the bull as a sin offering the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat which is on the entrails uh, scroll down for you here if it cooperates with me here we go and verse 9 and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them which is by the flanks and the lobe above the liver with the kidneys it shall he take away as it was taken from the bull of the sacrifice of the peace offering and the priest shall burn them on the altar of the burnt offering and the skin of the bullock and all his flesh with his head and with his legs and his inwards and his dung the whole bull he shall carry outside the camp to a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burned it on the on wood with fire where the ashes are poured out it shall be burned now once again you see we have color coding here and this time again maybe three sections we're going to look at the first one is in red and then there's blue and then there's magenta and uh, re the first part speaks of redemption now when we talk about salvation Jesus Christ is all that we need now yes there's healing in his redemption some people say no enough <laughs> they need to read the God word of God amen all right that is provided by his stripes and so on and uh it's recorded in god's word and so uh, but there is physical healing but more important than physical healing is spiritual healing whereby we become born again we are redeemed we are redeemed so verses three or four again if the anointed priest sins i'm reading new king james now bringing guilt on the people then let him offer to yavah for his sin which he has sent a young bull without blemish as a sin offering. Now, this redemption that there is provided for us is provided by God the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, of course, all these sacrifices, whether it be a bull, goat, lamb, they all had to be without blemish. No spot, no problem. They, they can't be sickly. They can't have a broken leg or something like that. Uh, it's, it, they had to be perfect. And of course, these sacrifices speak of the sinless life of Christ. And the bull, in this case, speaks of his servanthood. Throughout God's word, the bull or the ox, or we must see the word bullock, uh, speaks of servanthood quite a bit. And so uh, he was, and still is, a servant, you could say. But uh, he was a servant for our sake, serving the Father as we should. Now note that it says in... Uh, verse 4 that the priest shall lay his hand on the bull's head and kill the bull before you all once again aren't you so glad we don't have to do this okay. innocent animals do not have to suffer anymore uh it, it, it because of the cross of christ amen and so uh, but he lays his hand upon the head of the bull now this speaks of the imputation now some people say impartation imputation is even stronger okay uh, but it speaks of the imputation of our sin upon Jesus Christ while well even before he got the cross in my opinion but uh, he became sin for us amen and here we have it over in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 <laughs> For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> and every last person you see on there, except, of course, the one hanging on the cross, they 
were sinners. They came to Christ. And uh, they then become the righteous of God in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, it says here, he shall kill the bull. Kill the bull. Let's go back to our text so you see and you can follow along. He shall kill the bull. And God carried out his work through Christ upon the cross. Christ took our penalty for us. Christ died for us. And as a result, we must die to self and live for him. As God carried out his work of redemption through Christ on the cross, he desires to apply that redemption with fruitful results in our lives. Amen. So it's there. The cross of Christ is there. The redemption is there. And we call people to repent, to turn about, and they can do so by the grace of God. Now, we're not saying that you have to do all good works first, but the repentance begins in your soul and in your mind. It starts right there, begins in your heart. And I'm not going to do this anymore. I want to live my life for Christ. And so you begin to repent right then and there. And as a result, then you may receive the redemption that the Lord had provided for each and every last person on the face of the earth, no matter who they are. Amen. So, therefore, when we come to Christ, what happens now, when we come to Christ, is that if we accept his life, we do so based upon the fact that we agree that we should have died upon the cross. And Galatians 2.20 states that we are crucified with Christ. Amen. Now, we're not going to read the whole thing there. It's up on this. Well, we'll read later on. But uh, when followers of Christ are crucified with him, they are also raised to newness of life with him to produce the fruit that God expects from us. He, as he died so that we might live through him, so we must die to self and live unto him and live for him. Amen. So now I read it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live in the flesh. I'm sorry, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by, uh, uh, by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, it might be a little bit different on your screen. Uh, I use a slightly different translation so we don't run into copyright problems with the new King James translators. But uh, I always like to take that word faith in there. Uh, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Remember, we said this before, I'll keep on saying it. It can also be translated as faithfulness. It goes both ways. So, I live by faithfulness in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, there's the redemption. We are redeemed, and as a result, we become crucified with him. We, in fact, the actual Greek is co-crucified. We are co-crucified with Christ. This is a spiritual reality. It's not make-believe. It is not uh, symbolic. It's not a metaphor. You're looking at an actual spiritual reality. It's there. And some of them might say, well, I can't see the spirit realm. Well, you can, all, you can also be affected by it, though. You know it affects you and I. Uh, definitely. And so, but it's there. And so we are co-crucified with Christ. Now, this second thing, if we go back to our text, and this time it's in blue for you, and we'll go to that right now. The second part speaks of our reconciliation, and for that we have verses 5 to 7 of Leviticus chapter 4. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of meeting. The priest shall dip his fingers in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before the Lord in front of the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of meeting. And he shall pour the remaining blood of the bull at the base of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now, with this reconciliation with the Father in heaven, this gives us ability to approach, okay? 
And the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and bring it to the tabernacle. What? Of the meeting. It says in the New King James. And so, it might say of the congregation in the translation you have before you. Uh, okay, yes. Tabernacle of the congregation. And we, you, it's, it's good to look at it this way too. The tabernacle of meeting. And so he brings it before the public, you might say. And it all speaks of entrance to the holy place. Verse 6, the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before Yavah in front of the veil of the sanctuary. Now, this is so important. Now, by the way, at that time, that veil was one whole piece. But on the day Christ died, it was ripped apart, not by human hands, but it was ripped, ripped apart by the Father, you could say, from the top down to the bottom. Not from the bottom up, but from the top down to the bottom. The Word of God is very clear about that because if it was ripped from the bottom up, you could say, well, some person did that, some human did that. But it was ripped from the top to the bottom. And so it indicated that now the access to the Father himself it's it's open because of what Christ did for us. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful. Now, this is interesting, too. He sprinkles the blood seven times, all right, uh, in front of the veil of the sanctuary, seven times. Now, to me, when I saw that, when I see this, when I read this, I have to think of the seven spirits of God. And <laughs> after I got saved... I, you know, once again, I start reading Revelation again. I thought, what, seven spirits? Seven. But it's explained for us. And uh, let's show you the scripture where it, it, it's explained for us, okay, where it is explained for us. And that's over in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and might, spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And then after that, I didn't place it on the screen, but after it says, His delight is in the fury of all. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. Now remember what I just read, because we're going to have a scripture from John later on in regard to resigning our will. Uh, the, you know, here, right here you see that he resigns his will, the Messiah will resign his will to the Heavenly Father. His delight is in the fury of awe, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. And so this plays out over in the Gospel of John. Once again, you see the Old Testament is extremely important. I, I just, once again, I looked at a passage today that points to the fact that, as far as I'm concerned, we will not be here during the Great Tribulation period. And that was in Isaiah. That's my opinion now. Some people might say no and all that, but okay. <laughs> the thing is, just be ready, all right? Amen. It's it's no big deal. Just be ready. Some people think it is a big deal, but no, I just just be ready. Now, so let's go back to our text uh, so you see once again what we're speaking of, and I think we're in verse 7 this time around. Okay, verse 7. I'm reading from the New King James. Uh and mainly looking at the first part, and the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of sweet incense before Yavah. And then I'll read the rest again shortly. But this speaks of fellowship. He put places the horns, uh, places the blood upon the horns of the altar. And the horns speak of authority, basically, at, at all. But when he does this, it shows us that fellowship is being restored. Uh, that we, those those horns, you could say, in a way, could gore us <laughs> because we're sinners. They could very well gore us. Uh, other scriptures that come to my mind right now, <laughs> basically. Uh, but there's like one where where a sacrifice. I think it's it's over Psalms. Bind the sacrifice to the altar, to the horns of the altar. Oh my. Okay. All right. But fellowship is restored, amen. Uh, that's how I will look at it. And also this fullness of blessing, so I'll read the whole verse now, verse 7. Oh. Once again, the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of sweet incense before Yavah. 
which is in the tabernacle of meeting, and he shall pour the remaining blood on of the bull at the base of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the meeting. I said, this is all in view, you could say. Uh, what's going on here? And that speaks of fullness of blessing. It's all complete now to a point, okay? This is our redemption, complete. But then it doesn't stop there. We get to that magenta part there. So now I've got to scroll that down for you. And so you see everything that we have uh, for that section. The last verses of our text this morning. There we go. And here we go. The last section is verse 8 to 12. And here they are. He shall take from it all the fat of the bull as the sin offering, the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat which is on the entrails. The two kidneys and the fat that is on them by the flanks and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys he shall remove. And as it was taken from the bull of the sacrifice of the peace offering, and the priest shall burn them on the altar of the burnt offering. But the bull's hide and all its flesh, with its head and legs, its entrails, and offal, yeah. the whole bull he shall carry outside the camp to a clean place, where the ashes are poured out, and burned it on wood fire, where the ashes are poured out, it shall be burned. There you go. All right. Now, the whole thing gets burnt. You know, what's left of the bull, okay? The head, the skin, you know, all the guts, all that, the, and the dung. It all gets burnt. And what does it speak of? Resignation. When, when we get saved, this is what some people miss out when they get saved. They don't understand. They, they think, you know, it's just a ticket out of hell. No, my friend, it's not just a ticket out of hell. All right? I was going to go back to the camera, but we need to stay here, so I want to show you something about fat. It's not a ticket out of hell only, okay? And it's not a ticket to heaven. It's only, okay? It is, you could say, but it's not only that. The thing is, we're supposed to be entering into all that Christ is, his crucifixion, and then also his life. His life was resigned to do the will of the Father. Now, when people get saved sometimes, they say this in his prayer, all right, and they mean it, and they're saved, but then they think they could just do their own thing all the time, and it's not just about sitting, it's just whatever, okay? Uh, but we all need to listen to what God says. If more Christians would listen to what God says to them, there'd be more evangelism, there'd be more ministry, and so on. But people sit at home, well, I, I've been to church this week twice, maybe three times, and uh, back in my day was three times at least, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night. And uh, then the midweek service, I think back in the old, old days, it's like, what, four times a week, right? Because uh, they had the afternoon service and all, wow, okay. <laughs> but uh, nothing wrong with that, praise God, provided that the gospel is being preached. But the thing is, when we come to Christ, we're not our own. We should be open to whatever God says to us. And he might say, look, you need to stop going uh, there every, let's say, every Tuesday and start doing this. For my honor glory, he might say, start visiting people who are sick. Start visiting the shutdowns. It's, that's not just for preachers. Amen. It's for every Christian that's out there. Do something for the Lord because you love him. Because you love him. Amen. And then, but I want to point something out here about this passage. Look how often fat's mentioned. <laughs> and I remember years back, you know, I read Leviticus. And this is like maybe... Uh, I, I'm still a young Christian. And I'm reading, I'm reading over in Leviticus 3.16. It says, all the fat belongs to Yavah. <laughs> all the fat is the Lord's, it says in the old translation. It all belongs to Yavah. I'm thinking, why does, why does he want the fat? And then, the Holy Spirit, I'm not saying how good I am. This is how good God is. Each person needs to hear. If you're saved, you need to hear from the Holy Spirit. Ask these same questions before God. Study God's word. God, why do you want all the fat? And he says, the fat, he says to me, the fat speaks of glory. The excess, you know. When we get saved, we improve. 
but we should give the glory to God. Amen? It all goes back to him. I'm not the same person I was 65 years ago. I guarantee you that. Uh, not Even though I got saved in 1970, I'm still not the same person I was 15 years ago. Thank God. We have to improve. But we give the honor and glory to God. We just don't, you know, say, hey, look how good I'm doing here and all. We'll let God say that. We'll let God say that. But I need to say these things to let you know that we need to be resigned before the Lord. We're living in a time that people just love titles. And I just, it's like, I, I ask myself this question. I, I'm going to go back and see my face, okay? <laughs> I ask myself this question, all right, the final question. Don't you read the Bible? Don't you read the Bible? I mean, uh, at least, don't you read at least the New Testament? Jesus talks about people talking about titles. They love to be called uh, rabbi and, uh, and all that and now father and all that and so on they love to call these titles and, and all in christianity we have people that call themselves doctors oh well yeah they earned it well but still if i had a doctor's degree i wouldn't tell you all right now you know i wouldn't tell you okay uh unless it was absolutely necessary it's what true credentials and stuff like that how you know all this sort of stuff the only degree i have is a bachelor's in science in bible Okay, and uh, that's all I have. But once again, you could have any degree and still be clear off the mark. Clear off the mark, right? You need to sit at the feet of Jesus, right? So that was that's what needed to be done. Amen. So these tiles got to go. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this fat. One of these days, I could probably preach a, a sermon called, a message called, uh, Christians should have a fat-free diet. And I mean spiritual fat. You know, personal fat. I don't. You need physical fat to survive. Okay, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, so you need that. So I'm not saying don't eat any fat from food, but in the spiritual realm, the fat belongs to the Lord, and it, it's good. You know, it, it it helps a pastor sometimes. That was a good message, brother, and so on, or sister. Oh, do the ladies preach? I think they do. Okay, I know they do. Deborah, okay, a lot of people don't agree with that, but once again, if you study actual wording in God's word, the actual wording in Romans, you see that if there was a lady in Rome who was a deaconess, yeah, she was a deaconess, that's what it says, oh, but you won't see it in some translations, offend some people, okay, I'm oh, not a woman, deacon, come on, but it's there, it's there. The thing is, you, you study God's word at all, and you should develop, you know, as time goes on, you realize, hey, uh, in this case here, whatever improvement I've made, that belongs to the Lord. It all goes to him. Amen. It, it, he deserves every bit of the honor uh, and, and so on. So someone might say, Pastor, that was a good message. And that's, it's okay to, to encourage people sometimes, but if a pastor or minister hears that, don't let it go to your head, okay? Because if you do, probably next Sunday you will mess up big time. <laughs> Another story I can tell you, but I won't. Time's running out. I want to keep these things short, as short as possible, for many reasons, too. All right, so here we go. Let's go back to our text, okay? And I probably need to go up here uh, for that. So, all right. Uh, maybe, no, I'll still stay down here, okay? So let's go back to our text. All right, so there we are. And so uh, we're talking about all this fat here. Uh, Christ always gave the glory to the Father. He always did that. Amen. Now, I have a scripture that I want you to see here, okay? And it shows you that, and I want to point some things out about the scripture, not just one thing that applies to your message, but another side point that will help you in the future so you know about these things, okay? So let me just get this ready for you. And here we are. I want to read for you Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5. Now, we really should be reading more than that to get the context, but we don't have time. And I'd like to show you a graphic anyhow. So Christ also, Messiah also uh, glorified not himself. He didn't glorify himself to be made a high priest. But he that said to him, that's the Father, said unto him 
You are my son. Today I have begotten thee. Now, here's the point. Now, note the phraseology here and the wording. He talks about Christ being glorified as a priest. All right, now Christ always existed. The word begotten just doesn't mean to be born. It means to be brought forth, and the word shown forth, and so on, revealed, you could say, perhaps. So keep that in mind when you see the word begotten. But the main point for our message here is that Christ did not glorify himself. The Father did. Amen? The Father did. And so this is what needs to happen today. Don't glorify yourself. Don't walk around saying how good you are at all. And just keep a humble attitude about yourself uh, before the Lord, before others. Uh, this is how God wants us to live. Amen. He wants us to live with humility and honesty also. Amen. All right. So uh, we have to resign our workings. Now look, look at verse 11 again. And we need to go back to that, okay? And we'll go ahead and bring it up on the screen for you. And once again, you have to bear with me because I am nearsighted and I have problems, okay? All right, uh, here we go. And uh, we see here in verse 11 that it talks about the bull's hide and all his flesh with its head and legs is entrails and awful. All right, it's going to be burnt. It just everything is just given to God. Okay, He just resigned. Whatever I am, Lord, you take it all. You just take it all. Uh, I want to encourage some people right now. It just came to my mind some years back. Oh, years back, uh, there was a preacher, a Baptist preacher in Cambridge. He had a church up on Route 50 for a while, but it dwindled after a while. I mean, that happens sometimes in Cambridge. Different things occur at all and i could say more as to why i thought i think it might win it was not because of him but other factors too but uh, i was called by the person that owns the building that uh, if i want any of the stuff that he left i could have it because he just left he was crying his eyes out and all he was sad because he had to close his church the the stand that my laptop is on right now that came from his church that he what well, he did have and all but the thing is, you know, we put so much into ministry a lot of times, but we got to realize, look, look, none of that's in vain. Now, I know Paul said that sometimes, but he referred to how he felt. And, of course, the Holy Spirit permitted him to write how he felt. Uh, he, you know, the Holy Spirit permitted David and others, I mean, uh, yeah, how they felt. So we know how they felt at that time. For me, I look at it this way, no matter what I do in the Lord, it's not vain because his word shall not return void. And then I've seen, like, uh, let's take Brother Butler. Uh, he's now, you, you probably don't know who he is. But his work continues in various ways. All right? He is, some of his stuff is on the internet now, even though he was never around for the internet. Some people have put his stuff up. I've, th I've done that too. I put some stuff up by Hobart Grazier, my Greek teacher. And so you see your work continues somehow in some way, uh, and mainly in the lives of people that you have affected with what you have done and with what you have said. But we resign our will to him that no matter uh, what we do, okay, it belongs to him and we want to listen. We're not our own. We got to pay attention to what he says and go by what he says all the time. And note what Jesus says. Over in John, chapter five, verse thirteen, I can of my I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Did I tell you there's a match here? Let me go back quickly to Isaiah chapter eleven, verse three. His delight is in the fury of Ah, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. So what's Jesus saying here, basically? He's paying attention to the Father. In fact, oh, I've got time. Let me tell you this too, okay? Uh, you know it says somewhere in Hebrews, it says, you know, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. It's a quotation, I think, from Psalm 40. But if you turn to Psalm 40, it doesn't say body. It says, my ears you have pierced. 
And what happened was is that God permitted the Old Testament scriptures to be translated to Greek. And so your New Testament writers by the Holy Spirit would refer to the, the Septuagint, the Greek translation, by the Holy Spirit. So in other words, what I'm saying here is that this body that you read about over in Hebrews, a body you have prepared for me, it's like he's all ears. Whatever the Father said to him, he would do. And he would just obey. And uh, why? Because he loved the Father, first of all, and also he loved us. He did this for the joy that was set before him. And you keep on reading throughout all the Gospels. You talk about meekness and resignation. You go over to the time that he was arrested and, and all. And uh, there's meekness there. But before he was arrested, where, where is he at before he's arrested? He's in the garden of Gethsemane. And what's happening there is that our, I feel, it doesn't, say, it doesn't say this, but our sin was being laid upon him at that point, bit by bit. And that's why he said, let this cup pass from me. That's why he asked that of the Father. Of course, he said just after that, just about after that, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. But he purposely said three times, let this cup pass from me. And then the other part, not my will, but thy be done three times. Purposely did that for our benefit. And what was that cup? Dying upon the cross? No. Taking our sin and then dying upon the cross. Yeah. You know, think about it. If you are a person, I know there's some people out there, they're, they're, they, stay, they want to stay clean. I'll let you know when I do shopping, whether it's, uh, no matter what store I'm at, okay, I try to be careful what I pick up because people sneeze and I'll sneeze everything that's in the front. I'll pick it up from the back. And I'm not doing it because of the expiration date. I'm picking it up because I'm thinking, I'm hoping it's more clean. It's not clean, I know that, because someone had to put it there. But when I go shopping, I pull stuff from the back. And this is, I've been doing this before COVID ever came along. Yeah. I can go on with an illustration, but I won't. We don't have time. So in other words, I don't, I don't want to touch this dirty stuff. Do you think Jesus wants to touch sin? Do you think he want to become your sin, my sin? Do you think he, he wanted to be charged with being an adulterer, uh, being a child abuser, a drug pusher? Name the sin. He became that sin. Do you think he wanted that? No. That's why he said upon the cross he felt the same thing we should feel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? Because he became your sin, my sin, upon the cross. Everything that we need for salvation is upon the cross. So we got to resign our will to God's will. Just like it says, not my will, but thine be done. Yeah, we have to resign our will to his. Uh, so bear that in mind. And uh, perhaps I shall read that verse again. Okay, and what's it going to be? Verse 11. But I'm going to read it from New King James because it's more convenient for me at this point. But the bull's hide in all his flesh, with its head and legs, its entrails and awful. And let me get the whole thing, get the whole bull shall he carry outside the camp and so on to clean place and burn it and all that. So the whole thing, the whole will of us, our soul, body, our spirit, we resign it to God. We're not, we don't live for ourselves. We live under God if we're saved. And then this burning part, the whole bull he shall carry outside to the camp, uh, outside the camp to a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burn it on wood with fire where the ashes are poured out, it shall be burned. Totally consumed. Totally consumed. Now think about this. This whole thing's on fire. This speaks to us that we need to be totally consumed for the Lord, consumed by the Holy Spirit, by the flame of God's Holy Spirit, amen, totally consumed and a love for Him. So we need to be living for Him and serving Him in holiness and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we, when we get saved, the complete life of Christ is within us. Colossians chapter 2, the first part, verse 10, I'm not going to put it on the screen, it says, you are complete in Him. You don't need any more to be saved. You just have to agree to it 
by faith and not only be co-crucified with him, but also live the life, the Christ life within you by his power and by his strength. Actually, when that happens, of course, we too become a sacrifice before him. And our last scripture is over Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world. And the world try to do that. See, when we get saved, we have to learn to stop, to stop acting like the world. And it's, it's a learning process uh, uh, as time goes on. But people still act like the world. That there's, that's, that bothers me. And for their sake, I, I don't know where the, the Lord draws a line. I know we're saved by grace. But yeah, he, he worked with each of us directly so i don't know where he draws the line with each person and each person he could say is, is you know different in a way but yet we're all the same because we're saved by grace but yet grace doesn't mean do anything you want grace means also not also it doesn't mean do anything you want but grace means to do what god wants you to do with the power of christ within you right do what god wants you to do with the power of christ within you that's the other side of grace. We all hear about, hey, grace, you know, you're, we're saved by grace. I'm forgiven. And God understands and all that. And no, we need to add more to that, my friend. You know, grace is also ability, the power, the authority, the strength to do the right thing. And that's what grace is about. So if you get saved, not only are you co-crucified with him, you have to live with him, let him live through you and die to self every day. So you just don't do what you want to do. You do what God wants to do. It could be anything, any, any day. It's not just for a Sunday or mid midweek service. Any day, anytime, you do what God tells you to do, not necessarily what you want to do. And so if you're saved, get deeper in the Lord. If you're not saved, we invite you to come to Him. All that you need is in Jesus Christ. Redemption, reconciliation, Oh, I, I, I'm cool with God. You think so? You think so? If you keep on sinning, no, you're not cool with God. No, God demands holiness. He demands holiness. And so we're calling you to be reconciled with God. And then when all this happens, you do these two things. You receive the redemption, get into the reconciliation. You resign yourself. So in other words, the sinner's prayer is not just now. It's there all the time. Lord, I give myself to you. I yield myself to you. Whatever you want to do through, with me, through me and all, I yield myself to you. I love you. And so if you want to make Christ your king, if you want to have total salvation, please pray this prayer to me. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in to the very center of my being. I ask you that you cleanse me and fill me with your spirit. Help me, Lord, live for you, not just now, but every day. I make, I make Jesus Christ my Lord, my King, the boss of my life. And this I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, remember, we have a recording for you, Seven Roots for Growth in Christ. And you'll find that at archive.org. Archive Have a great day speaking today. I keep asking Alexa, what's the pawn count? It's always up. <laughs> Well, when's it going to go down, you know? So, but it's, so look for Sarah Roots for Growth in Christ at archive.org. And like we've told you many times before, you type that in there, but type my last name in also so you see uh, you get the right one. My last name is Macinta, M-A-C-I-N-T-A, and you'll have that recording. And there's links to that recording also at Sapphire Streams and maybe other places too. But it's there for you. But also we have some lessons for you once again i'd like to get back to them basic elements of christianity and this anyone can take these uh, and if you have a different language than english uh and you feel more comfortable with spanish you can take it in spanish but you just have to take the uh quizzes in english okay and so any language that google translate supports you may take our lessons 
and they are all free. You do not have to log in, so chances are when you go there. Uh, we have a security certificate, but sometimes on my browsers and elsewhere, it doesn't show up. Now, I've seen it on people's phones where it says, hey, this site's secure. Oh, cool. All right. So we do have a security certificate. But if you don't see it, you can activate it. And, and, and you, if you want to feel more safe that way, that's fine. Okay. But we really do not need it. We never ask you for a password. And we don't ask for your personal information so that is absolutely cool now we want to go to prayer we need to pray amen and prayer is very important intercessory prayer uh for people around the world and the first one is from russia on july 5th the united states commission on international religious freedom released a report outlining the conditions of religious freedom as it relates to russia despite outlining other severe instances of religious persecution over past years this report specifically highlights issues that have presented themselves since the invasion of ukraine pray for this report to draw greater attention to issues on the region and pray for growth and strength for the church in russia pray for peace amid the Rus russia and ukraine conflict Jesus, I do thank you this morning that you do hear our prayers. I thank you for uh, watching over us and protecting us. I pray for these needs that are there. I pray for uh, growth and strength for the church in Russia, that you might help them to continue uh, keeping on, not to give up. I pray for peace among, among Russia and Ukraine also for their in their conflict, that you might give them the peace that they need. But I pray that you might help many to come to you and uh, they will have peace like you want them to have peace i thank you for this i just pray these for these things in, in your name and for your sake amen and mine is from libya frontline workers request prayer for eight christians in libya including six libyans and two foreigners who have been imprisoned for their faith Please pray for these believers who have recently been imprisoned to stand firm in their faith as they endure persecution from the name of Christ. The frontline worker added that some of these now being held in jail could be sentenced to death for their obedience to God's word and for sharing it with others in the country. Libya has remained unstable and chaotic since the revolution and overthrow of the dictator in 2011 three opposing governments vie for control and the conflicts have severely damaged the country's infrastructure and rendered the gospel work in the country extremely difficult but we pray father for these that are in prison and going to go to court and all we ask you god that you move violently by your holy spirit and we pray that these people be freed and others too not just them we do pray for the country of Libya that things get settled and not settled with Islam, uh, whereby they have Islamic authority. But Father, help them, Lord, just to get settled down there and permit freedom of religion and permit the freedom of the gospel to go forward, that your name might be magnified. And we pray for the evangelistic efforts in Libya that you got right the steps there, meet the needs as soon as you can. Again, we pray for these people. Uh, I think it was like six or eight people that are in prison, that you just help them to be released. And when they stand before a judge, Father, give them the words to say and give them favor before the judge, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for viewing. Come on back next Sunday, amen. Praise the Lord. May one of these days we'll have a different background, okay? I'm thinking about that too, okay? So we're slowly improving bit by bit uh, and all. Thank the Lord. And with God's help, I try to listen to what he says. But uh, the thing is, come on back. We're so glad that you could join us each Sunday. And remember, God loves you. Jesus Christ is coming back real soon. And we hope that you are ready for him. Have a good day, my friend. You who dwell in the gardens, the companions listen for your voice. Let me hear it. Maranatha! 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 Maranatha.